We're making carbonara today, the real way and the right way, and I went to an Italian specialty shop to get these ingredients just so I know it's done right. The main ingredient for this is some guanciale. This is pork jowl. It has a fantastic fat cap and beautiful flavor in the center. And if you can't get hold of this, you can settle for pancetta or even bacon. The next ingredient is pecorino romano cheese. Again, beautiful flavor. This is going to be grated and mixed with egg yolks to create a slurry, which is the base to our sauce. If you can't get hold of this, Parmigiano Reggiano cheese is your next best substitute. Last but not least, pasta. I'm using Bucatini. This is a thicker type of spaghetti with a hole down the center, and it collects sauce really well. Let's get straight into it. Starting out, we'll bring a large pot of water to a boil over a high heat. We can then generously season it with salt, and we'll just let this come to a boil in the background. Right here, I have our guanciale. This right here weighs 250 grams. It has a really big fat cap on it, or the skin. We do want to remove this, but I find it a lot easier to slice it first. What I'm doing is just slicing this into thin strips. I do recommend making this a little bit thicker than you'd usually go, just because the fat renders out and it becomes a bit smaller. Once you have that done though, you should have something that looks like this. Once that's done, we can then remove that fat or that skin and you can do it separately or you can do it before it's completely up to you like i said i find it a lot easier to do it after with that done though just slice this all up into nice pieces making sure they're the same size that way they'll cook at the same rate and again just make them a little bit larger because the fat will render out and these will shrink in size for the sauce to our recipe, which is the cheese and the eggs, grate in 45 grams of Pecorino Romano cheese. Like I said in the intro, Parmigiano Reggiano can be used as a last resort, and make sure this is nice and fine using a microplane to do so. Next, we're going to add in four egg yolks. These have just been separated from the whites. You can freeze the whites and use them at a later date. And then just get in there with a whisk and mix this all together until everything's combined and it will thicken up quite a bit and probably get stuck to your whisk like mine did here. But make sure you give it a bang out just so you don't have anything wasted. With the pasta water now at a boil, add in 400 grams of that spaghetti or bucatini, whatever you chose to use. Let it sit for about 20 to 30 seconds, which will make it a lot easier to twist in, and then just cook it for one minute less than the packet instructions. Whilst that's doing its thing, place a large heavy based pan over a medium to medium high heat. Whilst it's still cold, add in that guanciale. No need to add oil because the fat will render out. And then just spread this around so it's not all stuck together. And what we're going to do is cook this for about five minutes just until this becomes beautifully golden. It's really fragrant and the fat has rendered out. You'll notice quite a bit on the bottom of the pan. You can choose to remove a little bit of it, but I highly recommend leaving it all in. Now once everything's done, everything's off the heat and the pasta is cooked, we can transfer it straight from the water into the guanciale and the fat. Make sure you add it all in there so nothing is going to waste. And also scoop out about three quarters of a cup, which is 180 milliliters of that pasta water. Before we do anything else, we're going to stir this all together. Make sure that fat's completely coating all of the pasta. This will also knock a little bit of the heat out of it. And then we can add in that egg and cheese mix. And what we want to do now is be pretty quick and vigorously mix it, just because this will scramble quite easily if we let it sit there. That's also why we've removed it from the heat at this point. Once it is completely combined, we can then start adding in the pasta water. The amounts are completely up to you here. It just depends on how thick or thin you like the sauce. I like this to be quite runny just to get an imitation of cream, obviously without adding cream. And once you're happy with it and you have a beautiful consistency and a nice delicious looking sauce, we can then start serving this up into bowls or plates or whatever you're into. And this recipe does serve too. Once you've got the pasta in there, you will have the guanciale left in the pan. Just spoon it over the top, also adding a bit of the sauce that might be left in the pan, and just evenly portion it all out. I do recommend topping it off with some more Pecorino Romano cheese, because cheese is cheese and it's absolutely delicious. Also hitting it up with some cracked black pepper, which some people might say is wrong, but it is definitely needed. And you should have something that looks like this, which is a beautiful and delicious authentic carbonara. With everything done though, there is only one thing left to do, and that is we can get this delicious pasta and we can then dig in. The guanciale in this really does take it to the next level. It's salty and it has beautiful flavor. The fat that renders out creates the perfect sauce mixed with that egg yolk and cheese. And then the consistency is completely up to you depending on how creamy you like it. Obviously we haven't used cream in this and it is an absolutely delicious dish. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, consider subscribing along with hitting the bell notification next to it and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.